Hello, this is Christian with Dark Portents, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about 10 books that I feel are criminally underrated, that are 4 and 5 star material, uh, that do really interesting things with the genre, but that for some reason not a lot of people seem to be talking about. So the first book on the list uh, is one you may have heard me talk about on the channel before if you've seen my other videos, and that is the Crimson Empire Trilogy by Alex Marshall. The first book is called A Crown for Cold Silver, and these books are just f so much fun. They're so fantastic. They have so much to say about uh, the human condition and about uh, about uh, the nature of religion and all kinds of things. And uh, if you like Joe Abercrombie's writings, Alex Marshall, which is a pen name of, I believe, uh, Jesse Burlington. I may be getting that wrong. If I am, I might flash it on the screen after I make this. But uh, anyway, Alex Marshall takes uh, Abercrombie's style of writing that particular kind of like funny uh, and 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 light as in levity, not as not as in the opposite of darkness, uh, grim dark, uh, and you know does some really cool stuff with it. There's this. Uh, really creepy system of devil magic. Uh, the insects in the world all have venom that can get you high or kill you. Uh, the um, the main characters are all like washed up old. Well, no, that's not true. Not all of them, but many of the main characters are these washed up old villains from back in the day who are coming out of retirement to. Uh, kind of do one last campaign uh, and you know so in that way it kind of is kind of reminds me of like a less tongue-in-cheek and less uh, sort of campy version of uh, Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames um, and uh, yeah it's just like t there's so much going on there's like a pending apocalypse there's this uh, war taking place over uh, whether or not the Crimson Empire and the Burnished Chain, which is the religion, are, are going to continue to dominate everybody's lives. And uh, it opens up with a quest for vengeance by uh, the one of the main characters, Cold Zosha, who is uh, in many ways the main protagonist of the book series. And she is uh, an old retired uh, veteran, and she's forced out of retirement to uh, go on this quest. It's really, really fun stuff, really great stuff. If you like Joe Abercrombie, if you want to see different kinds of characters represented as uh, heroic protagonists or anti-heroic protagonists, then you're used to seeing, uh, check this, check that out. Crimson Empire Trilogy by Alex Marshall. Now the next one you've probably heard me go on about incessantly, and I do in eventually tend to uh, intend to review it on the channel as well as on the uh, Legendarium Green Team podcast. And that is uh, The War for the Rose Throne by Peter McLean. The first book is called The Priest of Bones. The third book is coming out next month. And Priest of Bones is like if, uh, if Peaky Blinders was... Uh, a, a fantasy book that took place instead of in actual historical England in sort of an alternate version of England and uh, the main character instead of using uh, guns and uh, gambling on uh, horse races is more focused on building a business empire out of um, taverns and uh, I believe there's a brothel and other businesses in the uh, town he lives in, and he fights with with two swords, which of course he named uh, in the uh, recent war that he is returning from to build his business empire. It has a lot of the same themes as uh, as Peaky Blinders, but there's mag a really cool soft magic system, uh, and it's one of the best soft magic systems I've ever read, besides. Uh, 
you know, or especially for something that's not really epic fantasy. These books clock in at 10 hours or less. They're really short, but they, uh, they are, they really pack a punch. You know? uh, Peter McLean does a lot with those 10 hours. And if you like gangster movies or gangster books, if you like, if you want to see a criminal priest run a gang, kind of like uh, the Gentleman Bastards and Lies of Lacamora, but way cooler in my opinion. And if you want to see uh, a modern fantasy book that's written with brevity and terse pacing, fast pacing rather, and terse prose in mind, you know, the, these books do not waste your time at all. Uh, check this thing out. Uh, uh, if you're tired of the big epic door stoppers and you want something, something that'll just like t you can just tear through in a night or two, Priest of Bones. It's uh, it's some great stuff. And the narration on the uh, first two audiobooks was just so great by John Lee. I highly recommend it. Um, and the third uh, criminally underrated uh, book and book series that I've got here for you today is uh, recommended to me by uh, Drew McCaffrey of the Inking Out Loud podcast and oh, these books are a treat. The Acts of Cain first installment is uh, Heroes Die by Matthew Stover and these books are so freaking cool. Uh, the concept is that we develop technology that allow us to uh, travel to another universe, a parallel universe, to like an alternate version of Earth that has uh, elves and dragons and magic and real gods and all that stuff. And uh, the way that it is used is to send actors uh, to this other world and have like their internal thoughts and their viewpoint uh broadcast to an audience on earth um so that the actors uh go on these adventures uh and it and it, and it becomes like a virtual reality uh television show of sorts for people to uh uh to to engage in for entertainment and these actors um, uh, go to this other world and they kind of mess things up a lot and, and cause a lot of problems in order to make profits for these studios uh, and advance these actors' careers. And it follows a, a particular actor named Kane, who is uh, just the ultimate sociopathic, psychopathic anti-hero. Uh, and he uh, is really a bad dude, and uh, you really get to rooting for him and his... Uh, struggles with the studio and his struggles with uh you know the forces that are arrayed against him and his family and uh you know you get to kind of wrestle with the morality of somebody who is so uh, nihilistic and just uh miserable <laughs> they're really good books especially that first one heroes die i have not finished the series yet but i am excited to eventually do so so check out the acts of Cain by matthew stover and uh check out the inking out loud podcast reviews of them because they're pretty great uh the next one on here is ed mcdonald's black wing or the raven's mark trilogy i believe it's called uh Ed McDonald is another uh, little-known uh, author who's uh, struggling to uh, get his uh, work out there, get his name out there, like uh, Peter McLean and others that I've mentioned. And man, Blackwing is just so much fun. It's like nothing I've ever read. It takes place in kind of an alternate version of, of Russia, I think, or of the Eastern European states. And it follows this guy whose job it is to hunt down uh, monsters for and enemies of the state uh, that come from this like sort of like like evil you know uh, outside civilization that's trying to like conquer all of humanity with their like like twisted uh, no longer human uh, slave army. 
Yeah, it's really cool. So yeah, uh, Blackwing has elements of flintlock fantasy, uh, there's gothic horror elements, there's, um, uh, there's all kinds of cool, like, magical creatures that are nothing like you've ever seen. It has kind of a steampunk feel to some of it, uh, and it is just the, some of the bleakest grimdark, uh, that I've ever read, and it is so, so much fun. The, uh, lead character, Galharo, uh, is just a great point of view character to get into, and he reminds me a lot of the main character of the next series that I'm going to talk about as well, which is uh, Low Town by Daniel Polanski. Uh, if you haven't read any Daniel Polanski and you want just the the briefest little taste of Polanski, actually I'd recommend just pick up The Builders because it takes like two hours to read. It's a nice little short story. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about Low Town because uh, I just read it. And Low Town is... Um, a uh, book about a it's kind of an urban fantasy uh, with a with a grim dark tone to it and the main character I believe people call him warden though his name doesn't really come up much even though he's your uh, first person POV through the entire thing uh, he is a former spy for the throne like secret police uh, sort of like thuggery kind of stuff, but it's but now he's a drug dealer, and he ends up in the first book at least. I haven't read past the first book. He ends up having to um, go back into uh, his crime fighting uh, and and spycraft uh, past and try to solve a series of child murders uh, that end up and that have been taking place using uh, the dark arts and just a really fun uh, sort of mystery uh, uh, in like a grim dark urban fantasy setting. So the next, uh, the next book on the list is another urban fantasy setting but something very different. It's M Mike Shackle's We Are the Dead and Mike Shackle depicts a world that is something like uh, if you're experiencing the Nazi occupation of France, but in East Asia, uh, with demons and magic and stuff instead of guns and bombs. Uh, it's uh, urban, urban setting, action-packed, uh, goes into the lives of some of the uh, former... Uh, soldiers who uh, were part of the uh, army before the invasion, goes into the lives of some of the criminal underground and the way that they've turned to terrorism to try to uh, fight the occupiers, and it's a, uh, a really great, uh, also grim, dark as hell uh, depiction of what life in an occupied city would be like, and the, uh, the magic system is heavily skewed towards the bad guys, and they're scary, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and and uh, you guys should check that out. Um, another one that you don't see a lot of people talking about, but is a really good story, uh, nice little mystery plot, is uh, Black Hawks by David Rag. And this one is a little li on the lighter side of the still grimdark-ish fantasy uh, spectrum. Don't have too much to say about it, but it's just a really fun book, really short read, really fast paced, really cool mystery plot, some of the best action I've ever read in fantasy, uh, really easy to visualize everything as you're reading it, uh, and you should definitely check that out. So the next book I want to talk about is The Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne by Brian Staveley, uh, which is one of the most unique fantasy books that I've ever read. It follows a set of siblings who are all uh, children of the Emperor, 
and they've all sort of been given different uh, roles in the imperial family uh, during a time of crisis for the emperor for the empire. Uh, you have like one character who's been sent off to become a monk uh, in like the ma the mountains and the monastery, and his story opens up with like this mystery around like uh, some kind of creature that's uh, hunting down like the goats and and things out in the monastery uh, uh, area and uh, it's like some sort of supernatural creature and they don't really know what it is and they're kind of like dealing with that uh, and you have another character who's his brother who's off being trained uh, to um, to fly as part of a team on these giant like winged creatures called Ketrol that like carry soldiers in to do like raids and stuff and can like fight in the air and you can throw munitions off of them and, uh you know it's kind of like an elite fighting uh unit in the in the imperial military um and it also follows the uh daughter of the emperor who uh is at home dealing with the internal politics of the imperial capital and there's it, it without spoiling anything it follows the empire in a time of crisis and shows how these different siblings that are scattered across the continent of the imperial heartland deal with that and it's one of the coolest fantasy books i've ever read and it's just a really unique setting really unique characters uh really cool plot and some of the uh the magic system is is really neat. Um, all right, and the second to last book that I want to talk about is uh, not uh, even close to Grimdark, like most of the others have been, but is a, a really cool heroic fantasy that just is nothing like any other heroic fantasy I have ever read. Um, it doesn't really do, like, the traditional hero's journey type of thing, uh, and it, uh, doesn't have a setting that's anything like anything you've ever, you've ever seen before, uh, and it's focused on sort of evoking a sense of, like, wonder and adventure in the reader that is nothing like anything else I've ever read. Uh, and it's called Dawn of Wonder by Jonathan Renshaw. Right now, it's a standalone and has been for many years uh, because the writer is taking forever to get book two out. But the first book by itself is just a masterpiece. It's so well done. It's uh, been a long time since I've read it, so I don't have much more to say about it. But uh, I will eventually be rereading it to review it on the channel. And uh, it's just a load of fun. You should check it out. And finally, from my picks, you have the Paladin Trilogy by Daniel M. Ford. The Paladin Trilogy is like a... The, it's a very interesting book series. I never thought I would like something like it. It's kind of like if you took like the typical D&D Paladin and depicted their journey... But, uh, but contrasted against a world that is very grimdark-like. Uh, so it's a heroic fantasy, it's not grimdark, but the setting is very ruthless and brutal and has kind of a nihilism uh, baked into it. But the paladin, the paladin and his retinue have to like sort of build a heroism and a hope uh, and a and a faith and so on against the bleakness of the world. And it's just really well done. Uh, Michael Kramer narrates the audiobooks and they're really great. And it's a lot of fun and it's a, a much more adult book than I would have expected for something called the Paladin Trilogy. You know, it seems like it's going to be just like this pulpy, like Dragonlance Forgotten Realms type of thing. Not Nothing against those books, but you know, they're clearly aimed at a younger audience and uh it's it's nothing like that they're very serious books it takes the uh, it takes a pulpy sort of D, &D 
concept and uh, instead takes it serious, takes it very seriously and uh, aims it at a more adult audience and, and doesn't go the pulp direction. It's a lot of fun. So that's my, uh, my 10 picks for criminally underrated fantasy series. Uh, all right, Dark Portent signing out.